to the 2023-2024 organizational meeting for the Camden Select Board. So the first item on the agenda is the swearing in of newly elected select board members. And Bill Kelly is going to swear in Chris Nolan and Allison McKellar. All right, good afternoon, everybody, everybody at home. So um, Chris, we'll do you first. And if you'd raise your right hand and repeat after me, and please stand up. Thank you. I, Christopher Nolan. I, Christopher Nolan. Do swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. Do swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. And of this state. And of this state. So long as I shall continue. So long as I shall continue. A citizen thereof. A citizen thereof. So help me God. So help me God. I, Christopher Nolan. I, Christopher Nolan. Shall continue with the duties incumbent on me as a select board member. Shall continue with the duties as incumbent upon me as a select board member. Until June 30, 2026. Until June 30, 2026. For the town of Camden. For the town of Camden. According to the Constitution. According to the Constitution. And laws of the state. And laws of the state. So help me God. So help me God. I, Christopher Nolan. I, Christopher Nolan. Do swear. Do swear. That I will faithfully discharge. That I will faithfully discharge. To the best of my abilities. To the best of my abilities. All duties incumbent upon me. All duties incumbent upon me. Pursuant to all charters. Pursuant to all charters. Ordinances, policies, ordinance, and rules. Ordinances, policy. And rules. And rules. And regulations of the town of Camden. And regulations of the town of Camden. Of which. Of which. I have the right and obligation. I have the right and obligation. To administer. To administer. Interpret and or act upon. Interpret and or act upon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, Allison. Hi, Bill. Here we go. I, Allison I, McKellar. Allison McKellar. <laughs> do swear. Do swear. That I will support the Constitution. That I will support the Constitution. Of the United States. Of the United States. And of this state. And of this state. So long as. So long as. I shall continue to be a citizen thereof. I shall continue to be a citizen thereof. So help me God. So help me God. I, Allison McKellar. I, Allison McKellar. Shall perform the duties incumbent upon me. Shall perform the duties incumbent upon me. As a select board member. As a select board member. Until June 30, 2026. Until June 30, 2026. For the town of Camden. For the town of Camden. According to the Constitution. According to the Constitution. And laws of the state. And laws of the state. So help me God. So help me God. I, Allison McKellar. I, Allison McKellar. Do swear that I will faithfully discharge. Do swear that I will faithfully discharge. To the best of my abilities. To the best of my abilities. All duties incumbent upon me. All duties incumbent upon me. Pursuant to all charters. Pursuant to all charters. Policies and rules. Policies and rules. And regulations of the town of Camden. And regulations of the town of Camden. Of which I have the right. Of which I have the right. And obligation to administer. And obligation to administer. Interpret and or act upon. Interpret and or act upon. Thank you. You are done. All right. So the final item before I hand over to the uh, newly elected chairperson is the election of the uh, select board chairperson. Do I have any nominations? I make a motion that we nominate Tom Hedstrom as chair for this coming year. Second. All those in favor? You have to. You can vote for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> right. We talked about this, Tom. Come on. <laughs> All right. Congratulations, Tom. You can take over this meeting now. Thank you. Um, the second item on the agenda this afternoon is the election of a uh, board vice chairperson. Do I have any nominations? I nominate Stephanie French. I'll second that nomination. The nomination has been made and seconded. All those in favor? Motion carries five to nothing. The fourth item on today's agenda is the re reappointment of the town attorney for the ensuing year pursuant to Article 4 of the town charter. Audra, can we get some background on that? So this is a provision of the charter 
that's uh, required. So the reappointment of the town attorney, as well as the uh, reappointment of the police chief, fire chief, and the general assistance administrator. So the first uh, reappointment that you're being asked to make is for the town attorney. I move to nominate Bill Kelly as the town attorney, or appoint. Appoint or nominate? Reappoint. Appoint. Reappoint. I second. The motion has been made and seconded. Discussion? My only, um, so last year we had the discussion about these reappointments just being pushed through without having any um, actual discussion about um, why it has to just be a reappointment. And it's just kind of always just feels like it's a rubber stamped without and it was put to us like, well, you just kind of have to do it. So I just kind of would like to have a little bit more of an explanation about this reappointment from you as far as why, why is it that it's a, um, like we have to kind of do it sort of thing. Well, from my perspective, you don't have to uh, because yeah. That's the way I function. So is anytime there's three people who vote that they don't want me around anymore, then I leave. Um, so there's that. But typically there would be, I'm speaking in the abstract now, yep. a discussion beforehand so that people knew what was perhaps the issues were and they're discussed during the course of the year, whatever they may be. Yep. Um, but there's a difference between appointment and then whatever you decide you want my role to be in terms of time, commitment. Um, just for the public and actually I don't know if you know this Chris but so my commitment is about 10 hours a week to the town um, in terms of um, the way this was structured and I probably commit somewhere between 15 and 20 over the course of the year just because things happen uh, as you probably know I'm here on Mondays and Wednesdays um, for roughly five hours each day or more and then I field whatever questions crop up during the week or for example um, um, yesterday we had a two-hour session here uh, to help Chris or I have phone calls and emails and things that happen all week long because that's when they happen and then of course sometimes I attend select board meetings but they're above and beyond that too yeah. so um, just gives you a sense of what my role is I think the advantage for the town is sort of a fixed budget item but um, there was some discussion about whether that should go away and whether it should be a straight hourly thing which is actually fine with me. I end up, um, in terms of time commitment to Camden, it's not a good, it's not an, um, a wise financial decision for me in terms of the time I commit here. Um, but I enjoy it here, so that's why I do it. And I like the camaraderie. It's a little different than just working out of an office. Um, and so for my role, I spend a lot of time um, ahead of issues. So department heads drop in or we have issues. And I think that works well. That was the first, uh, the process for my first, um, how many years was Roberta Hare that I was here? Maybe seven, I forget. And uh, that's, uh, that worked out well, because we had it off a lot of issues early on, and it's good to have dialogue. Um, so I think that's my role, and part of it, I think, is because I've been at this for a while, and it is easier for me and the town to have some discussion, and the, the employees department heads really and the manager a fair amount probably more than anybody actually uh, of whatever is cropping up so that's the way I function um, we haven't really talked about any detail it's sort of odd to do it here at the appointment stage but I'm happy to answer any questions but that's how I've functioned for the last um, three or four years is there a requirement the reasonableness requirement for appointments either yours or others um, how long is reasonable is it this meeting? Is it the next meeting? Is it one after that? In other words, how much time might we have if we wanted to table this for a bit to get some more data and facts? I don't have the charter in front of me. This is reasonable. Yeah, well, that's, I think you can define that. There's no particular recourse. It's whatever you decide. At least for me, there'd be no recourse. Okay. So on my um, very first day as a select board member, um, I also tried to not say, not also, but I tried to not reappoint um, Bill Kelly for some of the same reasons of just feeling like, hey, hold on, we're being asked to vote on something. Um, I think maybe I'd been to a couple 
um, I've been to many meetings, but a couple where I disagreed with Bill's interpretation of something. I think one time in particular had to do with the taco stand at the Snowball and municipal use. And I had gotten, you know, I had a really great argument for why his legal interpretation was wrong, and I um, said I, you know, didn't feel comfortable appointing him. Um, at that time, I wanted to go through more of a process. Um, what I can't remember how I ended up voting that time, but one of the things I've sort of learned subsequently is that nothing that we do tonight binds us for the rest of the year. It can be changed. It's almost a little silly that we even do the appointments at all. Um, you know, the money that's allocated for the town attorney is that whole thing has gone through the budget committee. There's a discussion about what that money was going to go for, who the money was going to go for. So there's already been a fair amount of public discussion. At any point, for any reason, um, we could um, find a different attorney to bring in to get an opinion on, on anything. So um, I don't know really why it was felt in the charter that we need to do this, because it really isn't even binding us to it for any period of time. It's separate from the hiring process, like when we do the police chief and the fire chief and all of that. So to me, it seems like more of a vote of confidence going forward, like you know, a signal to the public, we have an attorney. We have a plan for at least the foreseeable future. Um, and so that's what was reassuring to me, that you're not, we're not saying we're, if you know, something were to happen or we had more information that made us feel like this arrangement is really not the right thing, we could always get different legal advice. Is that accurate? Yeah, I think, I think it's more, for me, I look at it as a matter of continuity to make sure that we have a functioning town and government, and if at any point in time we want to change attorneys, then we have to have a process thing. It's a little bit of the issue to me, if we don't reappoint you today, what is the process? What, what are we doing? <laughs> right. So, I mean, the charter is your constitutional document, right. and it's adopted by the voters, and it says this is what you're supposed to do. So, right. I mean, that's it's a yeah. public decision to do that, and it is fairly common because it's a – get a little bit deeper into this. So what is my role? Um, because I'm appointed, I have this other sort of hat that I wear sometimes um, because I have to, above all things – make sure that the charter is followed, um, even over sometimes the select board decision um, or uh, the manager's decision or any department head's decision, because that's um, sort of like on a much smaller scale, like a role of an attorney general who then can say to the president, I'm not doing that, because right. they, they have to. And I've had those discussions um, in certain other municipalities before where I said, um, I can't do that, here's why, and if you all want to raise three hands, then you just tell me to move on. And even though the appointment is an annual appointment, um, my perspective is that as, as far as the attorney's role goes, it's a matter of trust and it's a matter of relationship. And I'm certainly, you know, as things evolve, if there isn't trust or relationship, then I'll move on. Um, I've never not moved, I've never been asked to not move on, to, I've never been uninvited, I guess. Um, but <laughs> there's always a first for everything, so yeah. I'm, don't presume to be perfect, but uh, um, so that's that's why because the people voted in the charter to say this would happen, and it is a constitutional office. I'm not an employee. I'm not subject to the personnel code. I'm not subject to those sorts of things uh, in terms of review or grievances or whatnot. Um, but I think, as I said uh, even back then, Allison, to you, that anytime three people raise their hand, um, then I will move on. Right, now you have to make a correction. Instead of reasonably possible, it's practically possible yeah. after the organizational meeting, is what it says. But anyway, so, just to be yeah, to be clear, annual appointments, annual appointments shall be made at the organizational meeting of the select board or as soon thereafter as possible and as vacancies occur. I'm reading down a little further. No later than the third regular meeting and after the organization, organizational meeting. The select board shall review, appoint, renew, or reappoint a town manager. And then a little more vague, a little further down, at least on a quick read. Uh, 
other appointed positions. So I think that would fall in as soon as possible after an organizational meeting. It doesn't say at an organizational meeting, it says as soon as thereafter, but is fire chief, police chief, town attorney, assessor, and health officer. So we could wait a little bit. And One of the things that I had noticed, and maybe this was part of my select board introduction a year ago, I was shown an organizational chart and you know, from the select board, there was one town manager with maybe 10 department heads directly under you or something like that. And then separately was the town attorney. Um, to me, that's, you know, if, if the town, if the select board is responsible for hiring two people in the, in the town and only two people being you two, I would think that, um, and I agree with Sophie, by the way, that we, sh we should have a process regardless. Um, I, I would think that a, um, to, to give you an opportunity to have an employee review would be good. Um, you know, what you think you've done well, what you think um, can be improved, and you know, those are the questions I think of and how we can support you in, in your role, whether it's you or someone else. Um, if, I, if I had my choice, I would say that that, that would seem like a, something that we should schedule immediately, Very go through that process, and then make a decision after that. So I think we can reappoint Bill and still have a review process and decide whether to keep him or not. I feel a bit um, tentative not having an, att an attorney available in the interim. I, I, well, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think this would mean that Bill wouldn't be our attorney. It would just mean because... So we're reappointing him and organizing a, a review process and a, and a new hiring process. Is that what you're proposing? Nope. Nope. Um, I'm, I, I see what you're saying. It just says, I'm saying that we don't necessarily have to reappoint him today. We have to do it within, again, we can read the charter. Um, because he's been appointed, and unless we unappoint him, right. That's right. then he continues to be in that if role. If so the, serum, the act of doing yeah, it again. As soon thereafter as possible. So there's, I would suggest that that gives us a little bit of wiggle room, a couple of weeks as soon thereafter as possible. So are you amending the motion? Nope, nope, um, I'm not. So, um, I, so wanna, I, wanna, I, want, I want to hear, I want to hear other people's thought process on that. And then if, if, if it seems like, uh, go ahead, Allison, please. So, I mean, I think the, the, re the relationship with the attorney is something that, like, changes a lot, maybe obviously depending on who's on the select board and the bylaws of the select board and the process that we choose for how communication happens. And um, I can certainly say that there have been times when I've you know, felt as a select board member that I, maybe I was out of the loop on, on certain you know, legal philosophies or things that the town was taking a position on. And um, typically, I think it's been that the chair, um, or in the last few years, it's been that the chair and the town manager communicate with the town attorney and that anything else needs permission of the town manager or the chair. Um, and that, you know, I understand why that has been because it's, you know, things can get out of control if you just have individual select board members um, doing, contacting them on our own. But I, I think there's been not very much opportunity sometimes to just speak with Bill as a group. Um, how, and does get, that, how does that impact whether we... Well, I'm saying that now we have a different... Um, there hasn't been a lot of discussion about, you know, how certain legal decisions are, are made. And um, I think that sometimes that's, certain, that's good for there not to be all that much discussion and sometimes it's not so good. And that maybe the pendulum swung one way a little bit too much and that now um, there's no, no reason that at any meeting going for, we could uh, uh, reappoint Bill and then I entirely support having whatever the appropriate process would be. And I think an executive session is probably the right um, time for that where you know, the whole board 
does get to have a conversation with, with the attorney and get, in, get input on how should a board operate? How should we go about resolving disagreements in um, you know, what some kind of legal position might be? Or um, I know that I would benefit from getting a little bit more information and you know, having a chance to, to do that without it being you know, me just attacking something during my select board report or whatever, which is, um, so I'm, I guess I'm just saying that with, you're gonna be um, in a different role now and setting the agenda and that I would certainly support um, adding items like that that would, that would give us the ability to go through that process. Anybody, anything? Bill, I'm gonna put you on the spot a little bit. Yeah, you know, about obviously your own position. If the board were to reappoint you today and then we did a review process and through the review process, the board decided that we wanna seek a new town attorney or have a different structure, hire the attorney position out to various law firms on, you know, a case by case basis. What would be the process? If we reappoint you today, does, is this, you know, are we stuck with this for a year? <laughs> no. For lack of a better term? <laughs> Obviously, there can be a vacancy at any time when I say, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to submit my resignation. But I, I've said this to any town I've ever worked with. Um, I, I'm totally uh, contrary to the idea that because I got appointed, you're stuck with me. Absolutely not. Boards change, perspectives change. There's several things, for example, I could uh, comment on from what Allison just said to explain these things, but I think this isn't the time to do that. But I'm happy to have uh, additional meetings. It's I don't really define how much I interact with you guys. You guys do. Right. Um, but uh, to answer the question specifically, now if there were three of you who decided it was time to make a change, that's fine. And I think it's appropriate uh, at, at various times uh, if you reach that conclusion. It doesn't... I'm, I'd be sad to leave because I enjoy working here, but um, I get that. I've been around the political process for 30 years, right. and perceptions are one thing, and I can't help all of your perceptions. I'm pretty comfortable with what I do. I've been doing it a long time, and there's a reason for everything. Um, those are judgment calls I have to make. But um, So the answer, short answer is no, you're not stuck with me. If three of you decide it was time, you want to make another choice. Absolutely. So I just have a little comment because based on what Bill said, so I also have a lot of comments that I would like to say back to Allison, but I just don't think that this is the arena that we want to do that because we want to create an environment where we have the public that's listening to us reason and build trust. And that's how like I want to move forward. I don't think that putting a pause on just a reappointment and having a group discussion with Bill behind the scenes and just having these hard questions thrown at him, having him be able to answer us and um, going through that process, I, I, I would feel better with a reappointment at any level, having that kind of open discussion, but because it kind of goes into the personnel realm, I know that you're not Mm -hmm. technically that but it, it does touch into that mm -hmm. personal sure. personnel realm I wouldn't feel comfortable having that kind of discussion here because of all the things that I just said so I wouldn't have any problem just putting a pause on it right now having that discussion behind closed doors and then coming back with what we as a group have decided after that personally so you're saying you, in, in executive session that we would publish that we're doing, that we have that discussion about the two personnel items that we have yeah. in our direct report. Right. There, so in, um, in executive session, we wouldn't make any motions or make any decisions. We just chat and discuss, ask questions, have a lot of back and forth feedback, can get kind of lively sometimes. And then when we come back, it's very clear that we've reached. So use that as our vetting process. Correct. And, and with a similar notion, the jumping ahead, with the vetting process of the other appointments that we're being asked to do, mm -hmm. you know, it would be good. Mm -hmm. I would. 
So these are all three separate discussions. Yes. Okay. So right now we're on the town attorney, and I think Very it's good. better we'll stay there. if we stay on, on one discussion at a time. Very good. Go ahead, Allison. I mean, of course, we, we all have things that we've heard or legal opinions of the town that we personally take issue with. I could come up with, with a bunch, but I mean, having a, there's a lot that goes on that is just important, functional, get the job done, make sure that the town is taken care of. And I, the, I agree that in the future, it would be better for this not to go on the very first meeting agenda because it's you, you don't have that opportunity to to talk about these things and it's awkward and it causes problems but the the act of of just not reappointing the town attorney right now feels unnecessarily radical and that it just creates doubt in the institution for all of the things that are just basic functions of, of town government. So um, I don't, I guess I wasn't aware that there are, su there are such burning concerns. Um, but I think, you know, my father-in-law said to me one time when I was like, well, we should really put out an RFP and blah, blah, blah. And, and he said, uh, he, you know, he's an attorney, and he said, well, I don't know who you think you're going to get, Allison. Um, and it's changing the town attorney is, is a big deal. And I don't know why we would go the next two weeks with just not having some continuity. The semantics of appointment and reappointment and deappointment and all of that aside, I, I just think it sends an un uncomfortably unstable message that. I think, I mean, I think there are two different things here. Um, and whether we re reappoint Bill today or at another time is the number one thing. The second thing is having some form of discussions on Bill's responsibility and the relationship between the select board and Bill. And I think that's a, that's a good idea to have this discussion. I welcome it in public, actually, because I think public input would be nice. I don't think it, we necessarily need an executive session for this, because hopefully we don't need an executive session for this. Um, but. I would, I would be completely okay supporting reappointing Bill today and organizing a process to have a review within, within you know, reasonable time so we, we can tackle those issues fairly quickly and either reappoint Bill or, or confirm Bill or whatever uh, through a new uh, job description or scope of work or whatever we want that, that we could vote on it as the select board. Um, but I, I, feel, I would feel a little bit weird leaving the meeting right now and not having reappointed a town attorney um, in the interim. So I think we can, the goal, if I understand correctly, is to reset the relationship with Bill on new grounds. I think that's what you're, you're trying to achieve. So I think we could achieve that by reappointing him and organizing a d different session, work session with him. That, that, I would have no problem with that. Okay. Anybody else? I look at it just a little bit differently because I'm not looking at it as we all have issues that we want to hammer Bill with behind the scenes. I'm looking at it as this is this has just been a first meeting. The select board is um, how I interpreted it last year was it's just what you do. And it was actually said to me, it's just what we do. So I am saying that we're not losing our town attorney if we push it off of, uh, till the next meeting. In our charter, it states we have three meetings to get it done. I'm saying I think it would build a better um, public view that we took a minute, had a, had a discussion, and then we came through. Because how long have you been our town attorney? In August, it'll be 20 years. So, I mean, I'm just saying that I've been a part of these, 
like watching and I haven't heard any any discussions like this happen. It's just always been a rubber stamp. So I don't think that saying I would just like to pause, have a discussion. We have a lot of new people and just have discussions with him and then come back and make our, I don't think that that is making the town feel like we are on unstable ground or I feel really that it's building, oh, they took a minute and looked at it and built this hopefully consensus and moved forward. That's what I have to say about that. Right. A lack of appointment today does not mean a no tomorrow. Right. But it does mean time to vet and showing of that vetting. And it could be a more stable, better relationship. As long as it means that we still have our town attorney for over the next three meetings. How, how would you interpret that? I mean, I, in this, at this stage of um, in the world with towns having such a hard time retaining employees and um, I guess my concern is that that would look a little bit like a, I mean, how would you interpret that, Bill, as a? Maybe we've put Bill on the spot enough. We, we have a motion and a second to reappoint Bill as the town attorney. Uh, all in favor of reappointing Bill as the town attorney? Opposed? Okay. The motion carries three to two. Um, this we'll, we'll, we'll discuss further. Okay. Um, the fifth item on today's agenda is the reappointment of the following for the ensuing year pursuant of Article 2 of the Town Charter, Police Chief, Fire Chief, and General Assistance Administrator. Audra, background. So this is uh, a little bit different in that um, these employees, so Police Chief, of course, Randy Gagney, Fire Chief, Chris Farley, the General Adminis uh, Assistance Administrator is Janice Esency. And this is a little different from uh, the appointment of the town attorney in that all of these positions, while um, any sort of hiring or dismissal of the police chief and fire chief have to happen with the select board, none of these three people who are employees of the town and are subject to the personnel policy are direct reports to the select board. So they're all my direct reports and their employment is separate from their appointment. Allison. So failure to reappoint doesn't mean that they would cease to be employed. Correct. Is it possible to um, appoint each individually or is it a group vote, all three or nothing? You can, you can certainly do it individually or you can do it as a group. It's up to the board. Well, when it comes time, I'd like to make a motion that we do decide on the appointments individually. I'll second that if we need a second. Motion has been made and seconded. Uh, discussion? Well, what I'd like to see and understand um, is for each of those positions, uh, as within the organization, um, understanding a rubric that we have to make this decision. Is this based on turnover over the last 12 months? What's that look like in, in each organization? Also, what has there been for complaints in the organization, against the organization? How are they doing on their budget variants in their individual department? How did they do for this past year? And uh, how are they doing on their certifications and requirements in their individual departments that they had? Um, I'd like to know those things as my way of assessing and hopefully our way of assessing uh, whether or not those organizations are running as desired. And uh, if those are not the, uh, you know, the four items, those are just simply examples of four items that could be used as a metrics in determining uh, the organizational status before going ahead and approving the appointments. I, I don't feel that this is the appropriate moment to do that. I think um, 
that what has made sense to me before when there are concerns with um, or questions about department heads or the way different departments are performing that since, as Audra said, all of these people are direct reports to her, that the appropriate way for um, us to exercise like initial oversight would be through Audra and through um, asking you know, what her process is for evaluating these people and the metrics and that if there are benchmarks or goals that we want to set that we communicate them through Audra and then it's ultimately the town manager that we're holding responsible for you know, her, her most important job is to oversee the department heads. And um, although we confirm the hiring and firing of those you know, specially classified employees, really what it is is a, I see it as mostly a vote of confidence in the town manager and his or her ability to oversee them. If we're, if we're getting to a situation where each of us has to, where all of us has to independently evaluate, well, we've got this town manager, but we think this, you know, the police department is doing this and the fire department is doing this, and we want to individually set stuff for each of them, then you've got a problem with your town manager, if that's what it's going to come down to, that we should be communicating goals to her and then holding her accountable for doing that. And so I would be inclined to do I think a blanket reappointment and then deal with um, the rest of that process, I guess, in a similar way that we discussed with, about with Bill. I think these are good metrics, and I think we never have a chance to evaluate those metrics. So another you know, thing to consider. Um, but the basis for the reappointment, we don't have any data for to reappoint or not, right? It's, it's pretty much a procedural. It's procedural, right. So again, I mean, I think it's all good things to, to look, look at and to be better acquainted with the performance. I think those metrics are very interesting. But I would support just reappointing them right now, but organizing another review process. Um, I think everybody would be interested in that. So Stephanie. I find it interesting that we've split it up the way that we have and um, now that these conversations are coming in. So in our 630 meeting tonight, we have reappointments of the town manager and I just kind of feel like it's a little backwards right now. Um, and that's how I felt with both of these number four and five in this organizational meeting. I just kind of feel like it's a little backwards. So. Um, I'm probably going to vote no just because I just feel like the process is not correct. We have the opportunity again to say we're going to think about it, talk about it and come back with hopefully more of, a, more of a consensus. I never feel like being forced into anything is the way to go. I don't feel like it's a procedural thing and just go for it is something that we should give to the community. So that's how I feel. And um, with the first meeting being reappointments of these department heads, and as Allison said, to me, it is a vote of confidence. Our first meeting is, it's just a lot for especially new people to just come in and just be told it's a procedural thing, just do it, and later because I've been on this a year and later has not come for probably 95% of the things. So at what point do we say, guess what, today's later? Uh, Allison? We did a, a contract with the town manager. I, I agree really with everything mm -hmm. you're saying. I've been that person. I hate being told we're voting on this, but you really have no say. Mm -hmm. I like it if we are going to vote on something, I like it to be meaningful and I like my opinion to matter. And mm -hmm. um, so I don't know why it really is in the charter this way. And it, I don't understand why we're voting on some of the people right now versus some of them at 630. 
Um, but the charter gives us three meetings, so we don't have to yeah. do it right now. That's, that's all I am saying for number four and five is we don't have to do them right now. We can like take a minute and, and look at it. We don't have to do it right now. It's not it feels saying- feels like torturing people a little bit. Yeah, I, 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 so we don't have to do it right now. And, and I think we could, these are changes we could do for next year, for instance. But I think the expectation also on the part of the police chief and the fire chief that this is a procedural vote. Um, and they didn't come here today expecting to be put on the spot. And I don't think it's fair to do that without warning. So I, I'm all for changing and improving the way we do business, but I think we need to be considerate with who we're doing business with. And these are people who are working with us, not for us, but with us. And they, they deserve, if we're gonna, if they're gonna be faced with a no confidence vote to, to know this. I don't, I, I don't think that, it's very fair. Um, I don't think that just saying a pause for a meeting is a no confidence vote. It is just saying that at 6.30 tonight, we have other reappointments that I feel like should happen before we do these. Yeah, it's, not, it's not a foregone conclusion that this is a no confidence vote. This is a, right. an amendment to say, hey, let's delay this a little bit so we can understand what the metrics are and that these organizations are being measured. We do not have access to the personnel files and folders. We don't know what's there. But we do know certain things are probably available or should be available if they're managed properly. And that can be a matrix of which can be used so it's not just an emotional vote. It's not just on hearsay. It's not just on ad hoc conversation, but built somehow on some level of metrics to say this is where they are. If there are goals for these people, great. If they're you know, attaining them to a certain percentage, wonderful. But we don't have access to their personnel files, nor do we desire access to their personnel files. What we'd like to know is on an organizational level, how is the organization functioning? I've offered up you know, a straw man of of four different things that we could look at on an organizational level to see how they're doing. And based on those pieces, then we can make a, a more informed decision. Or maybe there's something else. Allison. So the, the budget committee process is, is pretty grueling um, in terms of having a group of citizens followed by the select board um, each of these department heads is responsible for creating a budget that is based on past goals and objectives and votes of the townspeople, then presenting it to the budget committee, which has been elected by the people to provide a recommendation. The select board sits through all of that, listens to all the concerns. Um, then the budget committee votes as a vote of confidence on in terms of the plan that's been developed um, you know all of us usually disagree with little things here and there but overall what i saw during the the budget committee discussions was a very organized plan that was very much vetted by first you know a citizens commit the town manager a citizens committee and then the select board and then it was just voted on um, by all the townspeople. And so, to me, that's, that's pretty good. The people of this town just voted to pass the budget that was presented to them by these people. And so, to me, a lot of that is, is continuity and us recognizing that in order to, you know, carry out what's been voted on, um, you know, we're, we're recognizing, by reappointing these people who just presented all of that, um, you know, we're, we're recognizing that we understand this doesn't just start with us being on this board. That's, so. cor that's correct, and budget being as important as it is and the time spent and the vote spent, that's why I think it's an important metric to say over the last year, how did your department do variance-wise to budget? Yeah, they, and that was all included in the budget committee presentations. Um, so. so I think that we have some restrictions put on us by the charter here, um, maybe even some conflicts. Mm -hmm. um, I see Chris's point, and I agree that we ought to have, if we're going to vote on these things, we ought to have um, some data 
that isn't just anecdotal or personal experience. Um, having said that, it, it seems like it's almost a ceremonial vote. Um, Audrey, if we were to table this, uh, would it be possible to get together if we gave you a, a list of certain things that we'd just like to know before we made this vote, um, you, know, you know, using Chris's examples, for example? Um, would that be possible um, within reason, again, given that we have to do it within three meetings, which puts us into the end of July or so? Certainly, it would be possible. Could we have a public discussion, though, about what those things are going to be? Because it seems like that's, mm -hmm. you know, when we all task Audra with just coming up with information ahead of the meeting, that takes a lot of time. And so, um, and I think that is one of the things that's gotten a little bit out of hand in the past of just like things tasked to Audra and maybe the yeah, whole I board is I, in, I in agreement, but if, if we were to have a discussion in public about. If you all make the decision to go this route, I would like you to all vote on exactly what it is that you're asking me to provide. Mm -hmm. And I would like you to be aware that it means there's a lot of other things that just get pushed back till later. You may already have things that you already measure and are easy to produce that would be of similar nature. And that would be beneficial. A, maybe easy to get, and maybe B, in line with what we're thinking about on an organizational level. And we don't certainly intend to make this difficult, but also it does, does say these are things that we're interested in. And you're right. They should be consistent and public, open and fair to you as well as to the departments that, that report well, to you. My biggest, my biggest ask from all of you right now is there's consensus amongst the five of you as to what you're asking me for. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. That's what I find to be most important mm -hmm. if this is the route you're gonna go down. Mm -hmm. Under what circumstances would we not reappoint, chief, I mean, yeah. to not reappoint the chief of police and the chief the fire, I mean, the general assistance director, geez. Um, so are we gonna, <laughs> like, because again, that's separate from the hiring and firing. Mm -hmm. So there, we're anticipating that there might be something that we need to know before we would sideline somebody that's already been hired, that we're, the town's gonna be paying. I mean, the police chief, we have an agreement with Rockport too. Um, I just don't see what, why we wouldn't, it, I do think it's, it's mostly ceremonial and that there's a whole separate process for hiring and firing and, and pressuring the, you know, the town manager to go through some kind of a process and w why we wouldn't be using that process rather than the reappointment the reappointment process. process is the process that's currently in front of us and it does not mean that they're sidelined this does not mean that their employment is in jeopardy this means that we want to know why we're voting yes or no and what are we voting what are the what are, how did we base our decision I, I i see chris's point here otherwise in my opinion, it's just personal experience or anecdotal. If you don't have some data to back this up, it's in, and it's different in Bill in Bill Kelly's case or in the town attorney's case, any town attorney, not just Bill, because those in the organizational chart that is someone who we have the we can say you know we, we don't we no longer want your services and we want someone else. In, in this instance, this is our one and only opportunity to gather any data on the. Uh, the performance I would I wouldn't say this is your only opportunity I would say if we if, if, if we ask Audra to give us information about their performance and she doesn't do that then then that's a serious strike against our town manager that would that would mean not necessarily that we wouldn't reappoint the police and fire chief it would mean that we that we might need to do a get rid of the town manager I mean that if we were to actually feel like like, okay, we're asking for this information, we're asking for these metrics, and, and our town manager can't provide that to us, or there seems to be some kind of obstruction or whatever, that would be a really serious strike against the 
town manager, not necessarily the. I, I agree. And we would need to deal with that through that mm -hmm. process. But are we going to go through that? Are we going to decide not to reappoint the town manager too but, until we have more metrics? We'll see what the town manager is able to provide based on the other organizational ads and metrics that we have. They're not, we're not looking to have unreasonable metrics that people cannot. I know, but we just did a performance review. And, sorry. Chris finish, yeah. Please. Yeah. No, we're not looking for unreasonable metrics. We're just saying this is about organizational performance. How is your organization performing? And what are the ways that we're going to decide on how that organization is performing? And based on that, we'll get our votes, yes or no. It is not an assumption automatically like, oh, no, this is, we're not going to appoint them. No. We're just going to appoint based on good metrics and facts on, for the organization. But if I may? That's all. Sure. Absolutely. If I may, the hiring and firing of the police chief and the fire chief are not the purview of the select board. Mm. No. I think they are specially classified employees that do require the select board to. They require us to, but the appointment is independent from the hiring and the firing. Oh, yes, yeah. So whether we reappoint them today or not, the only message you're sending is saying, we're not reappointing you, we're putting you on notice that we may not reappoint you and we may fire you. That's, that's the only thing you're achieving today by doing this. Reappointing them does not preclude us from having a process where we look into organizational performance and metrics and all those things. Um, I always prefer to at least give people the benefit of the doubt and outside of a process, reappoint them, organize the process, make it fair, have a clear and transparent process so they know what they're facing. Right now, I feel that we're putting them on the spot with no warning whatsoever um, and designing a process as we fly. And I, I'm not sure that's the most efficient way to go about this. I don't disagree with the fact that we should have more information and data to make, inform, to make informed decisions, but I disagree in creating instability and doubt on for employees who have been, you know, loyal, showing up, performing, whole kinds of things, you know, they're here. So I think if we could inject a dose of fairness and design a process that's transparent and clear, that would be really helpful for everyone. And I'm not sure we're on this track right now. I think we're very much on a track where we really want to put uh, Chris and Randy on notice, and, and I'm not comfortable with that. I think just by having it on the first meeting, it's putting everybody on notice. And I think five people or however, three people just making a statement that, again, I feel like we are putting the cart before the horse. And I don't think that there is any problem with putting a pause on it and having better discussions about it before we reappoint. It's not saying no, we're not going to. It's we have other appointments to do that I think are much more important and could offer different discussions. And again, the charter states that I guess to your point, Sophie, there are notice for three for three meetings. So putting it on the first meeting and just saying, okay, we're just gonna put it on pause till the next meeting. I don't think it's any different than it was an hour ago when we started it keeps it at the same at the same point allison there's a new budget that goes into effect that the voters just approved on, for june 30th so and the budget includes you know is a blueprint for a plan that was really heavily vetted so should should these department heads if they don't get reappointed today should they hold off on implementing the budget items that really depend on all of that was that was there was a serious amount of public input and in, in discussion in the, the that's what the budget committee process is and then we got to review all of that and say you know, we, th we think that this is, you know, the money and the plan that, that they need. And there were not drastic things that came up at that 
point. We, we recommended, I know you wrote it against the budget, I think, Stephanie, but. I know, because money and people are two very different things. Like the, the budget would be the budget for whoever was going to be the town managers of those. And switching this conversation into we're putting you on notice and. Well, our budget's going to look different if we don't share a police chief with Rockport or we don't, I mean, that's some, some, there is some overlap between budget and plans and mm -hmm. the people to carry them out. I just really don't think that the budget and saying that we just want to put it on hold and not have it be a rubber stamp is the same conversation. As I've said my piece. So we have a motion made and seconded to, and this motion is to vote on the three positions separately. Now this would be the police chief, fire chief, and general assistance administrator. So this motion is just if you are in favor of voting on those three reappointments separately. All in favor. What's the reason for that? I mean, I don't mind that. But. I don't mind that either. Uh, five to nothing carries, the motion carries. Uh, we're still with the reappointment each individually. Would anybody like to make a motion for any of those three? Oh, I'm, I'm happy to make a motion that we reappoint Randy Gagne as the chief of police. I'll second that. Motion made and seconded. Discussion? All in favor of reappointing Randy Gagne as the chief of police. Five nothing carries. I make a motion that we reappoint Chris Farley as the fire chief. I second. Motion made and seconded. All in favor of reappointing Chris Farley as fire chief. We have discussion. A discussion. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Thank you. I'm new to this. Re discussion. So this is just one of those things that I wanted to have discussion about and why I want to have this tabled because we are expanding um, our fire station into EMS and helping with first responding. And I think that having a metrics of where we're at with that um, and how comfortable everybody's feeling and having everybody have a conversation about that would be really helpful in having a trust factor going forward. And I would really appreciate having a discussion about that on that level. I don't disagree at all. But are you making this conditional to reappointing him? It's not conditional about reappointment or not. It's just we're just being told it's procedural, do it. I feel like having the trust factor of saying we've talked about it, we understand what um, each manager is doing. I feel like the police chief, chief of police, we know it's Rockport. It's been that way forever. We have this new thing coming in. Exactly. Of, it was not, it was not well, forever. We've been doing it for a long time, I would say. How, how many years? Six years. Six years. Yeah. So we've been doing that for six years. And, I, and me saying that I just would like to have more conversation with the town manager about the fire chief, it's not saying it's not a vote of confidence, it's we're just not rubber stamping it. We're saying we don't need to reappoint just because it's procedural. It's putting out the fact that we've talked about it as a five. And yes, we, I would like to have full consensus that we've talked about it and we've put out a firm statement and i just feel like this particular one i mean we're going into a new age we need to start recognizing that and we need to start building that forward not just with the fire department and ems town manager but also with all of us and that would be my ask is that we just have conversations about that Stephanie, if we had a select board agenda item workshop, if we, if we actually, you know, sunk our teeth into this a little bit as a board, uh, the EMS thing you've mentioned, 
specifically, and I've heard you speak of that before, uh, would that alleviate your concerns uh, that that we as a board are going to take it on and prioritize it as a as a town agenda item? That would make me feel a lot better, yeah, because okay. we really haven't had a discussion. It has just been. Um, there's been very few that have been brought to the board level. I've had a lot of discussions, but the three of you, I'm not our, I have not been told that you've had discussions even outside of here on just the public level, not even behind the scenes level, but just on a public level. So I just want everybody to understand like where we're at as far as you know, do you even know what kind of apparatus we have that are responding to these things? Do you know what the first responder role really even is? And who is running the program and all of that? Like, we are entering a new age. It's not just fire. It's not just the fire truck anymore. And it's not going backwards. So I feel like we need to dive in and really understand where we're at as a town because we're spending money out to Northeast for theirs and then internally we also have this other aspect going on and I just worried that we're just pushing it forward and I know that I have a lot of questions that I can answer but I would also feel a lot better if everybody else was just a little bit up to date as well. Sure. Allison. I mean, I, I feel that way about a, a lot of things, that I, I enjoy more discussion. If each of us gets to have as much discussion as we want on all topics, I know that that sometimes leads to too many hours. Um, but I remember the last time that Northeast was here, I wanted to ask so many more questions because I realized you know, it was something that I don't know very much about. For the most part, I'm comfortable with you, know, you being on the EMS committee and sort of bringing things to us, but it has gone too far without just the basic, I don't have any criticisms, but I have lots of questions just because I'm curious and so we haven't EMS done that enough. So the committee as well has nothing to do even with what we're doing as a town. I mean, it. Right, it's course, just the ambulance oversight, whatever. That is the, yeah. basically making sure they're following the contract. It's, I mean, we do talk about other things, but that's not the intent of that committee. Right, and so, so here I am thinking, oh, well, we put Stephanie on that, but really it's not <laughs> an avenue for anything right. to really happen. Right. I mean, I'm entirely so supportive I'm of having more discussions about this stuff. Putting it on hold and having a discussion about it is not saying a no, it's saying, don't we deserve to have more information before we say yes? It's, it's kind of like you don't believe, and I understand why, that there's any other mechanism for, for making sure that that conversation does happen. I mean, I do that too. Sometimes when I see it, finally, they've given me something to vote on. All right, I haven't been allowed to talk about this before, so. And this is our moment to say, you know, every, like every single discussion has been, well, at some point, we probably should talk about that and make it, like, this is the moment that we can say we are going to talk about it. Why are we not harnessing that moment? But do you have a little bit of faith maybe in, in, a, in a different structure now? It seems, I mean, I would take Tom at his word and everybody here, you've heard everybody here say that they'd be supportive of talking about all of that. I mean, I don't, I can see why before sometimes it may have been the reality that the only way to force a conversation would have been through this vote, but I, agree. I don't really feel like that would be the case now because it feels like in the area of EMS and fire and safety and that, you know, having Tom as the, I mean, I can assure, chair of the board I can assure would, you all that there's a lot of conversations that we're all going to have to have about EMS in the upcoming year because there are big changes going on. So aside from any decision on reappointment, those conversations have to happen. Right. And it's going to be, it, you know, it's one of those things that I can tell you as a group right now, that's going to be one of the biggest challenges that we need to problem solve our way through over the upcoming year. 
Yeah, so, I think. Please. I, thank you. I think you know, given we're already an hour into this meeting, which is <laughs> breaking ground already, Tom. Excellent. Um, no, I think there's a consensus that we all want to discuss and have the opportunity to dig more into data and understanding how different department works and or don't work or perform and don't perform or how we could equip them for the future and and be you know high performing uh, parts of the town. Um, and, and I do think that I'm, I'm going to trust Tom and in his new role to, to help us create those moments where we have more discussions and more um, openness and, and we can d deep dive into those topics that I know everybody cares about. But I would also make a plea that we not uh, confuse two issues that are adjacent and not necessarily the same um, and maybe move on by having a vote on reappointing Chief Farley, but making sure that we organize those sessions around understanding the performance of the department and having a, a, a real process to look into that uh, seriously as, as a board. Uh, because I think it's valuable for the community and for all of us to have those, op the, those opportunities to do deep dives. When people call 911, they want someone to show up. And so they need confidence in them too. And so whatever we can do to afford them that confidence is what we need to do. Please. Excuse me. Um, uh, come up to the podium. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yep. No. Is it there? Uh, um, Jean, excuse me. I know you missed my hand before. Just about oh. the whole reappointment issue. I'm just trying to understand. Don't all these people have contracts with like 60 day notice or something? Or I don't know what Bill's contract is, but it was something that I wanted to ask before. Just when you're talking about reappointment. So you're not really giving somebody a notice that they're not going to come back, but aren't they functioning on contracts already so that there's time so that if you want to, as a board, discuss all these things. I mean, I know when I was a teacher, I didn't sit in on the discussions about me when I was hired. And I was hired by principals, but then it went to a board, and the board had to make a, a confirmation. So. I'm just confused about are there contracts and are they 30 day, are they 60 day, do they not exist? And that's my question. I'll leave the contract question up to Audra. I will say that there, there's, in my opinion, there's a conflict in the charter. Uh, we are not responsible for personnel decisions, but we're asked to reappoint these mm -hmm. people. And it seems like th this year we've gone into a broader discussion than we did last year, but last year we hit upon this to a, to a lesser degree. And that is, why are we doing this uh, if we really have no say whether or not these people are, you know, employees of the town, maybe. Um, so, but Audra, could you answer the question about contracts? Yes, yeah, so we only really have two department heads with contracts, and that's Randy as the police chief and Carrie as the assessor, and that's just because they're shared with other municipalities. Everybody else falls in under the personnel policy and all of the... Um, the pay grades and everything that's outlined there. So do they have a certain amount of days though? I mean, just as an employee, you would have so many days for a notification. There's a Correct. whole you process. So in these cases, like I didn't get to ask about bills. So like does his contract, if you didn't reappoint him today, does that mean he doesn't have a contract anymore? I'm just confused. It just doesn't seem to... Like, I, like we were kind of I saying before, the appointment has nothing to do with employment. They're completely separate. So we would continue, some of them would have contracts where we would continue to pay them as an employee. Yes. But they Even were, if you didn't reappoint them, is that's what I'm trying to get at. Yes. It's crazy to me too. It seems like it's different so, in different cases. Because it's so sitting out here and I'm saying, wait a minute. You know, there must be something that comes together here that makes more sense. Because you weren't going to say goodbye to <laughs> Bill tonight, That's right. today, this afternoon. And then, you know, because he's obviously working under something, you know, that gives him time. Or, I mean, I hope. Yeah, it's kind of. You know, 
So thank you. Anyway, thank you. Thank you for, I think we're feeling kind of the same way a little bit. So uh, somebody remind me where we are. Do we have a motion? We have a motion, a motion made. To, thank you. Allison made a motion. I seconded to, to reappoint Chief Farley as the okay. Chief Fire. Is it Chief uh, of Fire and Safety? Now, Chief, Chief before I, I, I bring this to a vote, I just want to mention that it is my intention, and I'm going to state it publicly, to be um, actively involved in this. That the board, I can see, I can, I feel a lot of support on the board for this. Um, that we're going to be actively involved in uh, this transition, the EMS transition. And I, I know that there's a lot of responsibility that comes with that, and we will share some of that responsibility. So uh, all in favor of reappointing Chris Farley as fire chief. Motion carries five to nothing. I'm Please. move that we appoint Janice Esensee as the general assistant administrator. I second with pleasure. Discussion? Janice, just keep on doing it, please. Motion is made and seconded. All those in favor? Motion carries five to nothing, and that is the end of our select board agenda. Thank you, everyone, for being easy on me. I, I'd like a motion to adjourn, please. So moved. So for second. second.